This election season, we're talking about the racial wealth divide, and this is part three of that series. The 1980s, the war on drugs became particularly intense underneath the Reagan administration. Crack cocaine and heroin hit black communities particularly hard at the same time that we continue to be over-policed. Under the war on drugs, a series of laws criminalizing poverty, masked in drug legislation, funneled black people into prisons. Even though white people were doing drugs at the same rate as black people, they didn't have the same amount of policing that we had. And even if they did, the criminal justice leaned towards incarcerating black people at higher rates than white people and for longer sentences. While blackness and poverty are two separate things, political rhetoric and the media shaped the American imagination to believe that blackness meant poverty, ghettos, drugs, for black women, welfare queens, for black men, rapists. And this is how the war on drugs continued its momentum. Mass incarceration was seen as a logical solution to the problems of poverty in black communities. These are the same communities that were systematically kept poor because of what we talked about in part two with the redlining. And this is the same people that just a generation ago uh, was prevented from creating wealth underneath Jim Crow when they were sharecropping or kept in debt peonage. And so mass incarceration is a lot of things, but one thing it is for the racial wealth divide it is a systematic removal of hella people from the economy and keeping them from building wealth and passing it down. Nevertheless, even as you have mass incarceration growing, the 1990s and the early 2000s, some black people did gain a lot of wealth. They started buying properties in integrated neighborhoods that were not kept devalued just because they were black neighborhoods, they were redlined. But then from 2007 to 2009, the United States hit the Great Recession. And because big banks made poor decisions, the economy was terrible for everyone. But it hurt black and brown communities harder than anybody else. A lot of black and brown people had taken out subprime loans. Some months, the rate is really, really good. You have a low monthly payment, and then all of a sudden, when the economy hit rock bottom, your payment goes all the way up here. At the same time, you have a whole bunch of people being laid off from their jobs. Black and brown people lost their homes more than anybody else. And basically, the Great Recession just poked a hole into what black wealth is, right? It's precarious, oftentimes. And the reason that it's precarious is because the racial wealth divide is historical. It doesn't go away with just one generation's strivings. When all Americans are hurt by the economy, we're always hit even harder. When the economy is doing well, many of us are barred from taking on those same opportunities. When we see things like college debt is a big issue for all Americans, we find that we have more debt than anybody else. The racial wealth divide perpetuates inequality right now and most likely in the future, unless proactive measures are taken immediately.